Alrighty, why don't we get started? So, any questions about anything so far? Okay, so we're starting with uh, week 11. Week 11 is basically just practice with a race. So I really don't have anything new to tell you. Uh, I guess I'm gonna go through these and uh, if you don't wanna see hints, close your eyes. And try not to hear what I'm saying. So, um, <clears throat> or don't watch this video. Uh, so one thing was, uh, there was one assignment that uh, some students had a question on, and that was basically this one right here, where you're supposed to make an array of, uh, first you make one array of random numbers, and then you make another array of random numbers. So uh, how do you do this? I guess I'll show you. So first, and I'll call this array one, and this is going to have some size, right? And size is going to be some kind of a random number, okay? Uh, it's going to be, uh, what is the size here? So the, the size is a random number between 20 to 30, right? So 20 to 30. So in order for me to make the random number, I have to include time includes time h and I have to include the stdlib stdlib h okay and then this here now is uh, 20 plus rand modulus uh, what is it 11 okay uh, and of course I need to do I seed is equal to time null null and this is an integer and then I feed this thing into my S rand I seed and now I make random numbers. Okay, so uh, I make a random an array of uh, this many numbers, right? I'm actually going to make two of them and a two. Right, of the same size and then I have to fill them up with random numbers so I make a loop and i is equal to zero i is less than size right and i plus plus and then I do a i a one i is equal to uh, now a random number between 100 to 200 right so I grab this thing here now it's going to be a random number from 100 to 200, right? So now this is going to be an array of this many things, right? Size things, each of them is between 100 and 200. Uh, so that's my first array. And it might be a good idea to, you know, show the array, uh, but I'm not even going to bother. But all right, let's do it. So for and I, I can just recycle this loop here. All right, and then I do a C out, A1, I, uh, and L, right? So that's my first array. I can look at it if I want to. Uh, so now the next thing that I'm going to do is, uh, so this is the make the first array. Then I'm going to make the second array. And I guess this is your hint for P54, if I haven't done it this already. Hint P54, OK? So make the first array, show the array. OK, uh, then the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to make the second array. OK, make the second array. All right, so I already actually declared the array, but I need to fill it up with the numbers from the first one, but in reverse. So just like I created this array to show uh, this loop to create to show me the, the array, I'm going to use this array, this loop to, uh, let's throw in, eh, I can do this. So I'm gonna say int index one is equal to zero, or actually index one is equal to size minus one, right? So start, start index 
one at the last uh, position, right? So remember, if I have a size, if I have a size of, right? If I have a size equal to four things, right? The index is going to be equal to zero, one, two, three, right? So that's why I'm telling this thing index one is equal to size minus one, so that it starts at the last one, okay? So now that it's going to start at the last one, I'm going to use this index one to plug in into my array one, and I'm going to create array two, i is equal to uh, array one, index one, minus minus. Okay, so every time I go through the loop, the value of i is going to increase by one, and the value of index one is going to decrease by one. Okay? And then I can show you the second array. All right? And show the second array, then I just switch this thing to a two, and then it should be in reverse order. Okay? And that's it. That's, that's how you make an array with... Oh, wait. This was supposed to be... The values are supposed to be doubled. Okay? But in reverse. Any questions? Not, not too... Nothing fancy. Okay, so that was one of the questions. Uh, there was another question about the Fibonacci numbers. And I posted a massive hint underneath that assignment, so I'm not even going to go over it. Uh, <clears throat> so let me just go through these that I have for today and then uh, try to keep it short and sweet. So first one is uh, 61. All right, so 61 is uh, given an array of integers, return true if the array contains no ones and no threes. Return true if it does not contain one or three, right? Okay, so let's say I can just use any one of these arrays that I made in here, because you know it should work for any array. All right, I already have created the size, so I'm just gonna stick with the size. So I basically grab one of these, I'm gonna make a variable int count one and what's the other one? And three, right? It's gonna equal to zero. Get one of these here. Okay, and if any one of my array elements if any of these are equal to one, uh, or any of these are equal to three, right? Then I'm gonna count it. And then if, uh, and I'm of course I'm gonna have to put this inside of a function, so why don't I make a function? Uh, well, actually I won't put it in a function. So if count one and three, uh, is equal to zero, then your function is going to return true, and otherwise, else, see out, return false. All right, so of course it has to be inside of a function, and you have to return the value, you have to call the function, but that's basically it, right? So this is your P61, pretty much solved. All right, and P61, okay. And again, just like with every, every other thing, every other time I've told you this, if you're relying on my solution, that means that you got to go and do it again. Okay? If, you, if you had to look at my solution, that means once you're done with it, redo it again without looking at the solution, without even looking at your solution. Okay? If you have to look at your own solution, do it again okay? until you get it perfect without, without having to look at you know, anybody's solution. Uh, you can reference, you know, it's okay for you not to remember the exact syntax of how a loop is supposed to be or how an if is supposed to be. So you can refer to some old examples that you have on, on how to use a loop and how to use an if. You know, remembering, memorizing the syntax to me is not the most important thing. But understanding how to go through these and, you know, troubleshoot them and solve them yourself, that's the main, that's the main thing. So that's 61. Uh, 62. So given an array of integers, return true if the array contains either three even or three odd values all next to each other. All right, so again, this thing is, we already have an existing array, and 62. All right, so what we're gonna do is, we have to count uh, three even or three odd ones, right? 
So let's do this. I'm gonna say int events is equal to zero. Uh, odds is equal to zero, right? And then I'm gonna go through my loop. Again, I'm gonna recycle this thing here. Okay, and then in it, I'm gonna do if uh, any of these elements modulus two is equal to zero. So this is how we check if it's even, right? Check if even, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna say evens plus plus, and we're going to reset the odds. So every time you find an even, you're gonna make the odds equal to zero, okay? And then you're gonna have an else in there, else, and then for the else, you're gonna do the opposite thing. All right, just gonna grab the odds, increase them by plus plus, and then you're gonna have evens become equal to zero. So every time you find an every find every time you find an odd, you reset the evens. Every time you find an even, you reset the odds, right? And then at the end, you look at the odds, right? So if you, if you have if what do we have? If the array contains either three evens or three odd values all next to each other. So right, if you have counted exactly three, so if evens equals three or odds equals three, then same way as before, right? the true and false business okay that's it that's the 62 63 is uh, you're supposed to given an array of integers return the sum of all elements from the array that come before the first element that equals numbers four in the array okay and yeah my array here does not have it's not gonna have any fours all right so why don't I change it I'm gonna make this thing from uh, so this was this was from 100 to 200 and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it just change it a little bit I'll make it from 0 to 100 okay so now it's from 0 to 100 so that means it's going to hopefully include some fours in there okay or a four in there somewhere so that I can look for it okay uh, and then I'm gonna look for that four, so let's do this. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna get one of me, one of the, my for loops, recycle it again. This is P63. Okay, get that loop. Uh, and now what we're gonna look for is uh, if any of the elements are equal to what do we say? Four, right? So if we find this, if we find a four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop this loop, okay? And otherwise, we're gonna make some kind of a variable. And what is this supposed to be? Sum of all the elements, all right? So if you find a four, stop the loop. Otherwise, else sum plus equals a one i, okay? And you can actually get rid of the curly brackets, all right? So there's an if and an else in there, so that pretty much counts as one thing. But let me just, let me put them back in. There you go. Okay, so that's your sum of all the numbers before the element four. So sum of all elements before the one element that equals four. Okay, so that's your 63. And I, as you can see, these, a lot of them are not hard at all. Right? As long as you know what you're doing, as long as you know how to think about them, it's, they're not that bad. Okay, so now this one is a little bit more difficult. Uh, rearrange, write a function that rearranges an array of any size so that all the even numbers come before all the odd numbers. And just like with everything else, there's many ways to do the same thing. All right? So my approach for this will be to basically uh, create an array of equal size as the one that I'm working with and then I'm going to go through the original array one time, look for all the even ones, right? And at one by one add them into my array, my blank new array. Then I'm gonna go through the, loop, through the array a second time, and I'm gonna look for all the odd ones, and then I'm gonna add all the odd ones into, into my new array. And that's one way to do it. Of course, you can also think about, all right, hold on, I'm gonna try to make, more, make this a little bit more efficient and try to maybe insert the index the, the even ones 
all the way at the front and the odd ones all the way at the end. That's also possible, but a little harder to think. So let's just go with the simple stupid. So I'm going to make a new array. Okay, so P64. All right, so this is uh, int a even first, right? And this thing is going to be as big as the other one. And then I go through my original one. All right, and if any one of my array i's, a1i, modulus 2 are equal to 0, then I'm going to add that thing, my event, what is this, even, even first i, uh, even first i, do I want to do the i? No, I need to, I need a separate index for this thing. So I'm gonna say it index is equal to zero, right? So if any of these are are even, then index plus plus is equal to the a one i, okay? And by the way, uh, do you guys know what's the difference between doing this? Let's say I have uh, this versus this. What's the difference? If I have, if I have, let's say, index is equal to zero here, right? If I do it this way first, what is it going to do? What's the what's the difference between this one and the one on the bottom? Change the index first. Change the, change the index first. Which one? The bottom one, right? So this one changes it first. So if I if I have an index zero, right? This this basically does. If I do a C out here and I say index equals index, this is going to show me what value? It will be actually one. All right, so it shows one here. And that will be the same exact thing that this one will show too. If I have an index zero here, all right? So basically the, the end result is that index goes up by one, right? But the difference is this one here does this. This one does even first. It does it does the zero and then it increases it, right? And then versus the other one here, it will do even first. It will do the one, right? So the value of index still gets changed. It just it really depends on where you want to change it. And why am I putting this here? Well, because it saves me an extra line of code. Of course, I can do this. I can put index here, and then I can, I'm going to have to do the curly brackets, right? Curly brackets, all right? Then I have to do index plus plus in there, right? But instead of doing that extra line of code, I can pack it all inside of the square brackets, and it does the same magic, OK? So going back to what I was telling you, uh, even first, all right, so this grabs all of my uh, all of my even numbers and it puts them first in my even first using the index. Index starts at zero, and you know increases every time you find if you found an even one. Okay, and then I just go back, grab this whole thing, and recycle it if I want to. Paste. All right now, this time if it's not equal to zero, then you basically continue doing the same thing. So index would have stopped wherever it needed to stop from the first time. Then now you're going to put all the odd ones into the remaining elements. Make sense? Any questions? Not bad. OK. And again, this is one way to do it. It's not the most efficient one because I had to use, yeah, I had to do the loop twice. So you might want to think about it, you know, maybe how do you simplify this without, you know, using two loops? That's a little mental gymnastics for you. 64. Uh, and I don't know if there's any more of these extra credits. Yep, there are. Uh, 65. All right. Write a function which takes a parameter of an array of ints and returns true if the sum of all the twos in the array is exactly 8. Well, that's a piece of cake, right? You grab one of these. All right, let's go to the P65 and put that thing in there. Uh, and uh, if all the eights are a sum of sum of 
twos, right? So int sum twos is equal to zero. And if any of these, a i, a one i, are equal to two, then you add them to the sum twos, a one i, right? And then if sum twos is equal to eight, then you give one of those different messages as before. Okay, and there it is. And of course, it's got to be inside of a function. If it's not in a function, you don't get any points. 65, uh, 66, almost done. Uh, write a function which modifies an array of any size with a version of the given array with all the tens have been removed. Okay, that's an interesting one. Okay, because what you have to do is you have to shift things, all right? So it might be a good idea to start with like some kind of an array, all right? Let's let's start with like some easy some easy to see array, right? So this there's my array, and what I'm what I'm shooting for is I'm trying to I'm going to have to shift these two values where these two are, and then I'm going to put zeros at the end, and this is very important thing that you're going to have to master uh, in the data structures class because you're going to have to do do deleting things and inserting things into arrays and you're going to have to shift things around okay so what we're going to do is as soon as I find a 10 I have to shift everything to the right to the left of it okay so let's say I'm just going to work with these indexes right so this is my 0 1 2 three, four, okay? So let's say I, I found a 10. So as soon as I find a 10, I have to shift the one to the right of it, one left, the one to the right of it, one left, the one to the right of it, one left, okay? So that's the idea. So if I find a 10, shift all others, or make it back, shift all others, to the left and insert zero at the end, basically. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's say I found 10 in index two, right? So if array, what is this thing here? Array one is equal to 10. Now I have to do the shifting. Okay, so how is the shifting going to work? And by the way, this is an array of size. Uh, size here is equal to five, right? I will, if I wanted to, I can size is equal to five. Make it easier for me. Okay, so if I find this one, if I find the one to be equal to ten, I got to shift all the other ones to the right, to the left of it. All right, so I'm gonna. I have to say array. Let me just copy it. Array one is going to be equal to array two, right? Nothing's changed at this point. Then I have to tell it array two is equal to array three, okay? So basically, at this line, nothing really changes, right? And the next line, then the two goes here. So we're going to have a two and two and a three, right? Then I'm going to do it. You good? Any questions? Okay. Then I'm going to do it again for the last one. All right. I'm going to grab this thing, throw it in there. So now it's going to be three is equal to four, right? And then the three is going to get moved. Three goes here now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert. Then the last one is and then array uh, one equals zero. Okay, so that's what we got to do. So maybe I can maybe I can throw that not array one, array size minus one. Right. So I want to put a I want to put a zero at the end. That's my idea. Okay. So now there's going to be a zero here. So we got we basically effectively got rid of the 10. We made it a zero and put it all the way at the end. Okay. Uh, 
So that's what you have to do for this one. And what you're going to have to think about is uh, basically you need to have a loop that goes through the whole thing, right? So you're going to have a for loop here, for int i is equal to zero, i is less than size, i plus plus, right? If, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Put that in here. All right. I'm gonna throw that whole thing in there. Oops. Come on, where are you? Okay. And what I have to think about is I have to think, all right, hold on. Well, let me try to rep represent this thing. This first of all, if I ever find a 10, then this can stay the same because it's in term of in terms of size. But then this here. This is my I, right? All right, so this is I. Uh, and then I goes from one all the way to size minus one, right? So this one here, right? Four is equal to size minus one, okay? So this thing has to go from, from one, from the index where I is, all the way to uh, size minus one, okay? So in other words, I'm gonna have to make another loop in here, right? So I'm, actually, I'll put it under. So I'm gonna say, all right, now another loop, actually, let's call it, uh, I'll call this J, right? Because I is my, I is this, okay? So now I'm gonna say, all right, for int J is equal to I, right? Which is where, I, where the I stopped, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this thing here from what you're having to, oops. So instead of this, I'm just going to use an I in there. Okay, so J starts at I. Uh, J is less than size. And then J plus plus. And then this here. I'm just going to flip this to size minus one. This is going to be my J. And this is going to be a J plus one. Okay, that's the actual shift. Expression result is in use. Thanks for telling me. So this is uh, right shift left. Shift left. Okay, and then instead of using this here, I'm just going to use uh, if array one i. is equal to 10. Okay, and then I can just take these out because they were just for me to visualize this thing, All right? And then this whole thing happens at the end. I don't even need the curly brackets actually. Okay, so if you ever find a 10, right? Start at that index, wherever that is. So J starts at that index and the J is equal to the one to the right of it, okay? So just to make sure the J starts at, if this was a one, right? So J is gonna start at one, J is equal to one, then it's gonna go two, three, right? It will not go to four because I told it to go to size minus one, right? If I told it to do size, then it will go to three, four, but then when we have a four here and J is four plus one, we're gonna go out outside of the boundary for this array. Right, so that's why I'm saying, okay, minus one here, this is gonna go to three. So then the last one here is going to be three is equal to three plus one, which is what I'm gonna get here, okay? And the first time is when I is equal to one, right? I stops at one, at one, one where it's equal to 10. So I is equal to, uh, J is equal to one initially. And so you have a one on the left, and one plus one, two on the right, so that's the beginning of this, All right? So this is this is the actual shift left, okay? And you do that for every one of them, and basically that's what this does. And if I wrote it correctly, then it works. Any questions? Are you sure? Should it be size minus two? If I have size minus two, so all right, so one more time. 
you might be right. Okay, size is five. Okay, so if I have if I <coughs> if I have size, then this is going to do uh, is going to do one two for this case right here that we have, yeah. right? This is going to do one two three four, correct? Okay. Uh, if I if I do size so and then with a four here, you you get one too far. So I need to go one less than this. So I get rid of this one. I do minus one. So then the last one is the three. Yeah. So J J is three. Three plus one. So yeah. The easiest thing to do is just start with something small, like a small. Even this is probably a bigger, but not big enough. All right. So just start with that and try to see where the J starts. Right. This is this is my J here. I guess should have put it here all right so this is the J okay so J starts at 1 J stops at 4 all right is equal to uh, yeah you got it okay so that's that's the idea uh, and uh, yeah so this is your P 65 oh no that's not 65 this is 66 all right P 66 hint. Okay, do I have any more? I have a 67, all right. 67. So 67 uh, is write a function which calculates or returns the sum of the numbers in the array except ignore sections of numbers starting with a six and extending to the next seven every six will be followed by at least one seven. So they're telling every six will be followed by at least one seven. Return zero for no numbers. Okay, whatever. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna consider the case for no numbers. That's just like an if size is equal to zero. Uh, I think that's what it means for no numbers. Okay, well, whatever. I, I'm interpreting this as if the size is zero, it just returns zero. Okay, but uh, you have to sum everything from a six and a seven. Uh, oh no, you ignore everything between a six and a seven, right? So in here, you don't have any sixes or sevens. So the sum is of the sum here is all the numbers. Here you have a six and a seven, so you're going to ignore everything from the six and then to the seven, right? So it's it's again it's a five. Here it's you're ignoring these two, right? And then the size is, I mean, the, the sum is 1 plus 1 plus 2. Okay. Any idea on how to do this? P67. P67. So we're going we're gonna to keep counting unless we find a 6. And then you're not going to be counting until we get to a 7. Okay, so so come up with some variable uh, like boolean counting, right? Make it equal to true initially. Okay, make a loop that goes through your array. Okay, uh, if your uh, Array, what was the name of this thing? Array one, i is equal to six. You're going to stop counting, right? Counting is equal to false. Yeah? And then uh, if array one, i is equal to seven, then you can start counting. Does that make sense? And then if counting is equal to true, then you're, uh, but if it's a seven, you don't want to count it also. So I would also add another, an extra little thing here. Because it will start, it will restart counting for a seven, but you don't want to count the seven, right? So I'll just make the seven equal to zero array i equals zero right turn the seven into zero so it doesn't count right 
And if you're counting, which means that you got to the seven, right? If you have a, it doesn't say what happens if you have a single seven. So we're only talking, we're only talking about between. Oh yeah, it says that every six will be followed by at least one seven. And I guess if there's no six, you keep counting, right? Uh, so then you just do sum. I make a sum again. Zero, right? And then sum plus equals uh, array one. Does that make sense? And by the way, this can be simplified. Instead of doing this, you can say if counting. That's what C lion is complaining about. Okay, so let's imagine what you're talking about. So let's say uh, I have another array. So I'm going to go in there. Let's make another array. And you tell me what your what scenario you're talking about. So you have a yeah, you're saying you have a six, and then you have a seven, and then another seven. Yeah. It will count the second seven. Uh, oh, good point. If good point, good point. So if counting, good point. So we have we have to think about that case, which is. So if we if we have if we have this seven, what's going to happen? So this is the second seven, right? This is fine, but then it's going to make that also equal to zero, and we don't want that. So we want it to only turn this. So if array is equal to seven, and counting equals false. So if we haven't found one yet, does that make sense? Yeah. Only then turn it into true and make it a zero. Yeah? I think that makes sense. Yeah, because that's the second one. It will count. It will count it. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. But yeah, so again, a lot of times it's, it, 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 what you're thinking about makes a whole lot of sense. But then wait a minute, there's like one little thing that you didn't think about and you just have to go and rethink your code and add a little something in there. Okay, but good catch. So that is pretty much all there is this for this week's assignments, uh, right? Plus a few of the other weeks. Uh, let me see, since I have a little extra time, let me jump to the, where were these? That's just to show you real quick. I know some of you already have done it. Fibonacci. Okay. So the Fibonacci numbers, even though I threw a hint in, hint in there, right? So this is these are my Fibonacci numbers, right? One, one, two, three, five. Are these actual numbers? No, it's a picture. Damn it. Okay. So here, let's do it. So this is your P forty nine hint. I, I followed no particular order today. So this is uh, P49 hint. Okay, so this is the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, the Fibonacci numbers are uh, so you have a zero, then you have a one, then you have a one, then you have a two, then you have a three, then you have a five, then it's an eight. We'll take them five. 13, 13. And then three and uh, eight is twenty-one, right? And then thirty-four, and so on and so on and so on. So what's the relationship in these numbers here that you're noticing? If I call, if I say, if I have a variable first, let's say int first is equal to zero, right? And I have an int second that will be equal to one. And then if I have an int third, what is the third equal to? first plus second okay and they just move so then I just have to keep moving them and moving them so I go in there and I say all right uh, four and then I already have this pretty much gives me my first my first three right and of course I can throw in some ifs in there and like only show you the first one or show you none of them depending on however many you want me to show you but let's just go with the basics first 
So uh, if I wanted to, I can just do C out uh, first, uh, second, and third. Third. All right. Okay. So that's that's what I get. Maybe. Okay, so that should show me these three first numbers, right? So let's see how many I have in here so I can figure out how many I want to show. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? So ten numbers and I already showed the first three. So that means I'm, if I wanted to show however many, I'm going to do... Uh, so if I wanted to show want to show the 10 Fibonacci numbers, right? Then I will do a loop for int i is equal to, I guess, 0. Uh, i is less than 10 minus 3, because I already showed 3 of them. And then i plus plus, OK? Uh, then I just say, all right. Well, my first is equal to my second, my second is equal to my third, and my third is equal to the first plus the second. All right? So when I say first is equal to the second, originally this was the first, now it goes to this one. Okay? Then I say second is equal to third. Well, second used to be this one, but now it's equal to the third, which is equal to that one. And now my third is equal to first plus second. So now it's equal to the sum of these two numbers, which is the two. And I just show that thing. All right, C out, third, followed by a little comma if I wanted to. Okay, that's it. That's Those are the Fibonacci numbers. Okay? So if you think it's easy, it's not that easy. Okay, it's easy because I've done it and I've thought about this long enough, long and hard enough or hard as hard as I need it to. Okay, so it's it's a matter of putting in the time, looking at this long enough and hard enough, and you'll figure it out. Okay, so don't rely. And if you if you actually hit a wall in any of these assignments, it will be better off if you didn't look at any of my solutions. It will be, you know, just hit, keep hitting the wall, and eventually your brain will wrap itself around the problem and it will solve it. At least that's been my experience. Okay, a lot of times you look at it for the first time and you're like, oh, I can't do this. This is too hard. Don't get discouraged. Just take your time. Just take a break. Walk around. Think about the problem. Then maybe take a nap or, you know, when you go to sleep at night, your brain's going to work on this. Then when you wake up the next morning and you look at the same problem, you'll be like, oh, wait, that's a lot easier now than I thought it was. And that's what happens. The more you think about these, the, the better you get at it. It's solving these problems and, you know, you train your, your mind to solve these problems quickly and efficiently. Okay. So, yeah. That was your entire homework done in less than 45 minutes. Make it 40 minutes because I did a whole bunch of other ones too. So yeah, practice makes perfect. Uh, do, do these. Uh, if you can't do them the first time on, on your own, again, look at the solution, look at the hands, and then do them again second time without looking at any of the solutions. And that's, that's the trick. Okay. So that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to tell you as far as this week is concerned. Next week, uh, I'm going to assign the final project so you can start working on that since it's a bunch of points. And it's worth you know a significant portion of your grade. Uh, but if you do all these extra credits, that will help you towards your final. OK, so I'm trying to give you a hand here. Uh, any questions? Are we good? I hope so. Will you go back to uh, the 65 then? 65? Yeah, I'm What's up? So 65 was all we're doing is we're some. Oh, if. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Oh. Was that? Oh, you wanted me to add the semicolon. Thanks. Nice. Okay. Yep. I, I noticed, by the way, I did something that 
you shouldn't do, right? I wrote a whole bunch of stuff and I hope it works, right? Maybe it's not gonna work, yeah. Maybe I lied to you the whole time. All right, so test these, make sure they work, and if they don't, let me know and I'll help you fix them. So, but I'm pretty sure they they're are working. But like this one right here, especially the one with the seven that you caught, that wasn't gonna work for sure. Okay, um, yeah, that's uh, all I have for today. If you don't have any questions, we're done. And you can come see me in the office hour if you need it and send me your emails otherwise.